Hi guys, it's John here from High 420 and we're here with Francois Kroms Kutzer. Hi guys. From Tattoo Mania in Kenilworth, Cape Town, South Africa. Gonna have a bit of a chat about tattoos and the whole life, man. Cool. So hey, Franz, what 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 got you into tattoos? What was your path in? Well, my path into tattooing was actually probably by accident really. Um, I studied animation for four years and I was actually an animator for two years after that and what had happened was they'd never renewed my contract with the company I was working at and I couldn't find work for about a year and then what had happened was a tattoo artist saw some of my drawings and offered me a tattoo apprenticeship and I basically just took that up and thought let me give this a shot I've got nothing else going on at the moment so and ever since I've been doing that I haven't looked back I'm I love tattooing and uh, this will probably be the last career that I do for the rest of my life. Nice. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to, to <laughs> work with you, I've yeah. got some ink from you, you know, I've, I've, I've seen you work grow of course over, over the years and stuff. Now, there's always the the atypical annoyances of course of, of this industry as as as, 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 as anything as really, know, yeah. Right. So, your personal experiences, right, what, what was the weirdest client experience? you've had or that comes to mind like what's 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 that one that's gonna make us giggle <laughs> um i've actually had quite a few but i think the one that stands out the most <laughs> um i was placing a stencil on a client's i think it was just under like behind the thigh as i was placing the stencil um she actually farted <laughs> and um of course, it was only myself and her in the room, so it could only have been her. <laughs> uh, I didn't say anything, and she didn't say anything, but it, I think we both knew what, what went down. So I, just, I was just professional about it. Um, when I was done with the tattoo, then I kind of laughed about it. and I was still a bit shocked, but um, things like this happen. I mean, I've heard, oh, other horror, I've heard way worse stories from other artists, so I think I'm kind of lucky that that's what we like. The it's worst quite thing that I've experienced. So. But now the question is, where was your face at that current time of location? Like, was that I was like, actually like, 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 like right? Was that was that asked like in in, in, in face when that's that that, that, that a good distance? But. Yeah, no, I mean like so. Oh, I heard you just oh oh. No, but that was that was probably the worst. I mean, though. hats off for keeping a straight face. Like, I, I mean, uh, I think, but like in this industry, like, yeah, you gotta. I mean, I've I've done some weird jobs before tattooing, so. I think I've desensitized myself with certain situations. Um, I mean, you can giggle at certain yeah. things, but I mean, with my profession now, I believe that no matter what the situation is, just be as professional as you can in front of your client, no matter what they do, no matter what happens, just take it all at once, and then once they've gone and left, then you can laugh and you can do what you need to do to get like all of that like you know giggles out of you, but. Um, just be professional as much as you can be. Like, and, you know, you don't want them to yeah. feel uncomfortable. This is an experience that you're giving them. They're paying you to give them something that they want for the rest of their life. So they don't want to leave you going, oh my God, that just happened and I felt so bad about it. But like, I'm sure she does, but like, I still made her feel more comfortable yeah. than by me going, oh my God, what did you just do? Yeah. And, you know, which some people probably would do, you know, but all in all, you still want your client to be feel comfortable, even if they know that they are uncomfortable from what just happened. I mean, it is. It's, it's quite an intimate physical experience. It is like you know, marking somebody's body for. for and the rest I mean, of the more life. professional you are about it, I mean, the better they're going to feel. As well as if you, even if you just tell them, like, like even if you don't mention it, like, but if it was, for example, a loud one, and we both heard it. Then I would have just been like, "Don't worry about it." it okay, happens. okay. So, so, so was at least the, uh, of the course, speech yes. one. It wasn't like, <laughs> a, like, like, like a full-on like trumpet going on. Yeah, but uh, again, okay, like, okay, yeah, no. again, there are, I've heard way worse things happen to other artists, oh, yeah, no, friends of mine. Kidding. They've told me some stories where I was just like, "Thank God, not me," you know. Like, but and you know. on the other random point, like, uh, you've done quite a few tattoos now collectively over these years, right? So. Yeah. What what styles do you do you like prefer, and, and, and what styles really stand out, stand out to you? Well, I pretty much do most things. 
But for me, what I like, what I love doing more than all other styles, I mean, I'll, I'll do anything. Like, I love doing even Polynesian and tribal. But my favorites that I love doing would be anything American traditional, neo traditional, Japanese, or even full color, like anime cartoon style stuff, like bold lines, solid saturation of color. Bold will that, hold. That's, that's what I love doing. These fine little intricate little details, all beautiful and stuff, but I feel. Those tattoos aren't going to age well. Like they're going to look good for like five years maybe, but come the tenth year, all those little lines that are all like next to each other, they're just not going to hold up. Mm, it just fades into. Mm. So in essence, old school bold will hold. I mean, they've been doing it for years, and look how good those tattoos look. You know, forty years mm. down the line. Fuck like forty years down the line. Look at some of the mummies and stuff that they've dug up. You can still look at a tattoo that was done like this size that was done traditionally. You can look at it 40 years down the line and see it's still an eagle. Now, from my own personal, of course, question of interest when it comes to artists as well, because, you know, me being a body mind artist. So, what's, 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 what's your take on the whole blackout movement? And I'm, I'm not just referring to Brutal Black. I mean, Brutal Black is a whole separate ballpark of conversation. Yeah. I'm talking about just the blackout movement of, of, of blacking out the body, and, and as well as in, you know, doing work over it. Each to their own, eh? Like, everyone has something that they like, that they want to do. Um, I mean, I'm all for body modification. I mean, I still, <laughs> I'm still a bit weary about scarification <laughs> and tongue splitting and body implants, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, <laughs> not me, no thanks. But I'm not gonna hate on someone for loving that or liking that or wanting to change themselves or have that experience like if that's what you love do it like no one's stopping you no one's who cares what anyone else says like i love tattooing and i love giving people what they want um and the blackout thing cool man i'll if someone wants a blackout i've blacked out arms i've done it before not a full body yet but if that's what someone wants that's what they want like yeah so in essence as an artist you you take great pride in facilitating the experience for people to have what they want to exactly the like but to an extent as well like i mean there are certain things i will refuse to do like if someone wants to black out their body by all means do it like if you've blacked out your whole body to like here then you may as well black out your face you've, yeah. you've blacked out your hands you've blacked out your neck you know go for it but for example certain things i won't do anything i mean i'm not religious but if someone wanted a mm -hmm. A blasphemous tattoo to any religious tattoo like, or any kind of religion whether it be Christianity Satanism whatever it is I'm not going to do that like if it's putting down someone else's beliefs I won't do it um, I also won't do face tattoos unless someone is covered in tattoos already <laughs> like you <laughs> well I mean with all the love in my heart and my face kiss my ass I Thank love you my boy <laughs> nice man but again as I said like I each to their own, everyone can get what they yeah. want. Um, you'll find artists that will do things that other artists won't. Um, but I just feel like you gotta have a certain moral, you know, you gotta have a certain standing, like where you won't just do what the client wants, but you will still give them what they want to an extent. Yeah. Or at least, even if they want something that you're not willing to do, at least if you know of anyone that will do it, and at least will do a good job. Send them that way. Like, now, as a South African artist, you know, to really, really point, bring it back to the point. I mean, we're we're we're, we're in Africa, yeah. You know, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's what would you say is like a very very specific problems that 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 we suffer in this industry that people in in the states and the UK and even other third world countries necessarily want. Won't, won't, won't have as well. I mean, we've got, of course, the, the atypical down here and the cape. Like, on the face, a number is not always a good idea. I learned that lesson. Uh, <laughs> you know, but like, specifically South African issues on, 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 on the tattoo aspect, I mean, it's, it's become a lot more acceptable. It has. I can tell you from living here. I don't know what it's like anywhere else, but um, when people come to me and they want hand tattoos, face tattoos, neck tattoos, like, I'm all for doing it now, but I always warn them, I always say, look, one thing I've experienced, um, when trying to rent a 
place to live. <laughs> if you are covered in tattoos, your neck and your face and your hands, chances of you getting that place are very minimal, especially when your landlord is Muslim or religious in any way, because certain religions see tattoos as sins. You have now committed a sin. So I've explained to clients, I've explained to a lot of clients before, think about this. You know, and then a lot of clients have said they never even thought about the whole renting issue. And I said, I've experienced it. I've had to cover like wig, like, you know, mittens, mm -hmm. scars and everything just to like look like I'm not covered in tattoos. Um, that's one issue. Then if you're ever in court, judges are going to look at you differently. Police are going to look at you differently. Like even if they're, <laughs> even if they're amazing, good tattoos and they don't look like prison tattoos, you're still, it might be more acceptable now because more people have it, but people are still going to judge you and treat you differently without you even realizing it. I mean, I've just gotten to a point where I don't even realize people are looking at me. I think they just look at the beard. <laughs> but, but this beard has got But Dom, Dom notices it. She notices when people stare and I'm just like, they're staring and I don't even notice because it's... But now I wonder if that's just an oblivious issue because like, I suffer that myself also mm -hmm. quite where, I mean, we've walked How through shopping centers, you know. <laughs> This but, 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 like, we, I, I, on, on a lot of this, I'm completely oblivious to people mm -hmm. staring. Whereas, a general point out to me, like, uh, people are staring at you, and like, and it's, you still get that where you have that, and not to point out to a certain point, but to the stereotypical character, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll always have that in here, auntie looking at you going, I bet you he snarls the marijuana. I mean, he we, probably does. <laughs> uh, not a good way to consume it. <laughs> uh, and like yeah so where would you also like to see this industry in, in a couple of a couple of years time well i feel like the industry is doing pretty well in my opinion i don't know how it's going for everyone else but i feel like more and more artists are connecting with each other and there are even like groups on social media where people are actually trying to help and support people you know, I'm not all, I'm not supporting like scratches. Like, I mean, if you want to learn how to tattoo, do it the proper way. Get an apprenticeship. You know, learn from someone. Don't just start tattooing people. On that point, what is your take on this whole um, like tattoo and piercing schools thing? Oh, that's that's the, that's the, I mean, it's been me, going forever, but that is just a scam, and I feel like they're just taking advantage of people who don't know any better. I mean. Back when I started, if I didn't get my apprenticeship, like, I probably would have fallen for that. Like, I, I mean, I was young, I was a bit younger, not that young, but a bit younger than I am now. Um, I probably would have fallen for it, because, I mean, if, if you can't, if you don't know, if you don't know, and you see something that says, look, you get a certificate, all this, and you don't know, you're not educated enough about the industry to know that that's bullshit. Like, you... No certificate is going to make you a good tattoo artist. It's time and experience. And I mean, even myself, even to this day, I mean, I've been doing it for 10 years and I'm still learning. Like, and you don't want to tell your clients that, but everyone is always learning. You never stop learning. The moment you think you stop learning is when you stop progressing and you're never going to get better from that point. So these schools, they take your money, they teach you jack shit or they teach you what they see like a, a tattoo does a setup so they teach you what a setup and they give you some practice skin and they make you tattoo this practice skin for a week and then they go there you go you're a tattoo artist which you haven't learned how to do proper line work you haven't learned how to do shading you haven't learned how to do color packing you haven't learned how to do a proper setup you haven't learned how to clean surfaces you haven't learned cross contamination Bloodborne path. You haven't learned how to clean tips and grips. Even if you're using rotary uh, rotaries with the cartridges, you still need to know how to do okay. how to clean tips and grips. I mean, if I if, if I had any say about it, if any other artists that I know that are older than me had anything to say with it, they'd make people still learn how to make needles. Oh, but I, I believe that is a lost art. I mean, it's, it's it something is. I learned when when I started in this industry. But it's just because well, I'm as old as dinosaur. And course. also the whole apprenticeship thing. Why we. We also look down on people that do these schools is because the apprenticeship thing is so that we can weed out the people that don't really want to do it it weeds out the weak it weeds out the people that aren't willing to work yeah. if you get an apprenticeship you don't get paid 
if you get an apprenticeship, you don't pay. You basically work for free. Yeah. And by doing yeah, that like for a year, by doing that for a year or two years, your mentor and the shop that you're apprenticing at can see that you're willing to work hard and that you want to be in this industry. And that's why we do apprenticeships. Well then, I'm gonna ask you for a few points of advice. So first, what advice would you give to expiring artists out there that would like to get into, like a lot of people, and I, I mean, I get this question also a lot. Mm. How, if they wanna get into the industry, if you're gonna break it down to a few points for them, what was, is your advice? For the next lad that wants to get into this industry how to do it the right way how to do it the right way don't give up don't just go to one shop or actually not even go to a shop but don't email don't email and say you want an apprenticeship that is the first thing you get you're gonna send an email it's gonna get ignored you go physically take your ass to the shop with your portfolio and when i say portfolio i mean as many drawings as possible not things you've tattooed because if any artist in any shop is willing to get an apprentice if they've seen that you've tattooed from home already they will just not even accept you they will just be like no bro you've already you've already messed up yeah. so don't tattoo at, at all have as many drawings as possible and then take those drawings to a shop ask if they need an apprentice show them your drawings if they say no go to the next shop and keep going to every single shop. Once you've been to all the shops within your available distance that you can get to, go back the next month to every single shop. Keep going back because eventually someone is going to want an apprentice. Eventually an apprentice is either going to stuff up or lose their apprenticeship and there's going to be an opening. And you're going to be the first person that walks in with your portfolio and whatever artist may have seen your drawings over and over and over again is going to go, you're persistent, you want to do this, yeah. you're showing me your drawings, your drawings have improved hopefully, like the more you go there you show them more drawings, then the artist can decide whether he wants you as an apprentice or not. I mean I've had people come here where I've told them come back again and maybe I'll have an opening and I've had one guy come back and I've said look unfortunately I've got one, an apprentice ready, I can't have a second apprentice. But I always give those people that are willing to, to learn and do it the right way, I give them advice and I tell them, look, do it this way. Because they don't know. I didn't know. I was lucky to get an apprenticeship. And when I tell people I literally stumbled upon an apprenticeship, like these people don't know. So what they do is they see things on YouTube, they see things on the internet where they go, oh, you can just buy your stuff like, you know, off Wish or AliExpress or whatever, and just start tattooing people, and it's that's wrong. Yeah. By doing that, you are buying inks that have so much heavy metals in them and have so much like bad ingredients that you are going to poison. And that's people. not that heavy metal, guys. Not that kind of heavy metal, but you're going to poison people's skin. You're going to tear up their skin because you haven't been taught how to pull a line. You haven't been taught how deep to go. You haven't been taught anything. And just by looking at a video and going, oh, this guy's telling me how to do it. By all means, fair enough. But you don't have someone standing above you that can smack the back of your head when you stuff up. Yeah. Or that can fix it when you stuff up. This is what you have What's a mentor for. You have a mentor to save you. We are like a safety net. So that when you stuff up, we are there to actually lift you back up and make sure that you don't drown or end up like in court because some dude's arm is infected because you used Chinese knockoff inks. And I mean, it is, it's, it's, it's been a big problem that's, 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 that's given us issues for, for years in this industry. Yeah. But I mean, we can go on for hours and hours on those points. We could talk forever. Forever actually. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I mean, personally, like from my side, I, I've been proud to watch your art grow Thanks, and it's, it's, it's been an awesome moment here having a fat chat with you about this and we'll definitely awesome, man, yeah. check in with you again when when, when we're down here in the cape definitely man yeah you get a piece from you again but yeah um, yeah to, to to very much wrap this this this, this up any any last thing you'd, you'd, you'd like to say to your perpetuate new fans and, and people where where can they find you on your Insta, on your Facebook, here's your 
your 10 seconds of, of, of fame shoot out to everybody where to you find can find me on instagram as francois underscore tattoos um i'm also on facebook as francois crumbs Kritzen. um just have a good one oh well, well, well. big loves and we'll see you guys soon come get ink from this brother thanks Al. and go hi guys it's john from high 420 click like click subscribe and share see you out there